happen. First Peter chapter 2. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word. Amen. That you may grow thereby. Yes. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. Verse 4, coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, and precious you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. How do you feel that, that... that you're to offer up spiritual sacrifices to God. You know, sometimes we don't think we're worthy. Mm -hmm. uh, we get this thing that we can't do that. God's just much bigger than we are, which he is. But God is always in our presence, in our midst. And he wants us to have freedom to talk and to worship and to acknowledge <laughs> him. Verse 6, therefore it is also contained in the scripture. <coughs> Behold, I lay in Zion the chief cornerstone, elect precious. Mm -hmm. And he who believes on him will mm -hmm. by, by no means be put to shame. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, Thank you, Lord. what's it there for? To you who believe. Hallelujah. He is a precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone mm -hmm. and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Yes, yes, yes. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Mm -hmm. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, yeah. his own special people. Amen. That's right. His own special people, Amen. Amen. that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. We're chosen. Amen. But, you know, we put on this facade as a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we are Christians. And sometimes, uh, what's that look like? Well, you know, we say the right words. We say amen and we worship in church and say praise the Lord. Uh, but sometimes in our heart are little things that are just hidden. Right. That maybe uh, we've gone through the week and... We haven't even spent any time with our Savior. We haven't prayed. We haven't even sought Him. Haven't even thought about our Savior. And it just grieves His heart that all that He's done for us, that we could turn our back on Him, even for a moment, and deny Him. Hmm. But it's so easy to get caught up in that. You're busy. You got a job. Well, you can't forget. You can't miss the basketball game. Come on, it's just March Madness. No, March Gladness. I heard we heard one pastor today was going to make it March Gladness. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but you see, we can get just unfocused of who we really are and who God has called us to be. He didn't call us to come sit in a hotel and sit in a chair and just listen to some great preaching and scripture reading and teaching. There's a whole lot more responsibility than that. Yeah. He's placed giftings inside of you and me. And it's up to you to take that gifting and put it to work. If you are not using your gifting, you are being disobedient to the Lord. It doesn't take 40 people in this room to use your gifting. 
Amen. You ask God, God, let it flow every time we come together. If you give me a word, let the word flow no matter who's in here. Amen. Oh, it's nice to preach and, and, and speak to a big crowd. But can you do it for one or two? That's right. Amen. Is your reaction the same? Are you seeking the Lord the same? Yes. God, pour your, pour your spirit out on those one or two. That's right. Because if you set the one or two on fire to leave this place, guess what? It'll be contagious. Amen. Amen. Or do you just bury your light? Do you bury it? Do you hide it? Well, you know, I'm not going to, there's only three or four people here. Uh, how can I use my gift? Well, God did, didn't give it to you to sit on it. You're to use it. And so many times we we don't. I find myself getting into a rut. You do things that you think, what did I do that for? Why did I sit in front of the television for four hours? Does that make any sense? I could have sought the Lord for an hour, half hour. Ten minutes? Could have prayed for ten minutes? At least give him some of that. But you get caught up in the things of the world. And believe me, I've been there. This happened to be what I was studying last night. There's a lot. I have to. Because last night I found myself, I had to repent. I just said, God, that's me. That's where I'm at. I've lost that fire. I want it back. Because I know he's coming soon. Amen. And if we get caught back up in this world, we'll miss him just like the foolish virgins did. We'll miss him. The door will be shut. And when you knock on the door, he'll say, I do not know you. Oh, my. I've come too far, church, to miss him. Too far. This is from World Challenge. It's titled, A Christian Name Only. The prophet Isaiah said of Israel, and just bear with me as I read this. I just, I feel it's so important. They declared, they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. These words also describe America right now. Our nation has sinned just as Sodom did. We've become a society where any ungodly act can take place without a trace of shame. I believe America has come to the very brink of the abyss. Even the world agrees that things have gone too far. I recently read a newspaper report quoting rock stars who become famous ago for their immoral acts on MTV. Today, these same musicians are aghast at the horrible filth being spewed on America. They say that the immorality taking place is the worst they've ever seen. Then, just a few years ago, these performers took pride in ushering immorality to new heights. Wow. Now they shake their heads in disgust. And what they see, they admit, even we can't handle what's going on today. This country has totally stepped over the line. How will the Lord respond to our shamelessness? When evil abounded in Israel, God answered with economic ruin and depression. It seems the only way he could get the people's attention was to take away their livelihood. Yep, I'd do it. The Lord doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff. The whole stay of bread, Isaiah 3 1. This clearly means economic disaster. I believe economic hardship is also the only way God can capture America's attention. How else can he take hold of a sin? Mad nation, other than by affecting every person's wallet. Yeah. 
He's telling us, just as he told Israel, I'm going to trouble your economy. You're going to see me cut off your years of prosperity. Isaiah then describes an unusual scene. In that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread, wear our own apparel, only let us be called by your name. Take away our repro reproach. That's Isaiah 4.1. Seven virgins were trying to make a special arrangement to marry a certain man. Yet no love or courtship was mentioned in this arrangement. Not a word was whispered about an engagement, intimacy, forsaking others, remaining faithful. What's going on here? Isaiah is telling us that the, these women don't want a husband. They can love her or supply their needs. All they want is the man's name. They're looking for a loveless, non-committal marriage to provide them with a certain status. Oh my. Often in scripture, the number seven represents spiritual things. Most likely these seven women are meant to re represent a certain people to, ap to appear to have a part in God's kingdom. They're telling this man we'll make our own living and provide for ourselves. All we want is your name to take away our reproach. We want to appear good before the world. Your name will give us that kind of status. I believe Isaiah is speaking to the church. And the man these seven women wish to marry is Jesus. The prophet is illustrating something important here. He's saying that in times of turmoil, would-be believers will try to have a marriage of convenience with Christ. Yet such believers are Christians in name only. Yep. They'll want to appear spiritual, claim to be part of the kingdom of God, but they'll try to cut a deal when the Lord. They'll say, I want you, Lord, but I want to go my own way and do my own thing. Just give me your name. I want to be seen and known as one of yours and your bride. And I'm not going to read this whole thing, but there's so much there. Uh, if someone wants to take it and copy it, my gosh, I think it'll set you free. But it's where the church is today. It's where we're at. We want to look like Christians. We want other people to say we're Christians. But in our hearts and in our actions, we're far from a Christian. Exactly. Because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're letting little hidden things come into our hearts and our lives and, and pull us off the race that God has placed before us. He's given us a course, a task to do. And it's up to us to keep the fire burning, just as David had to encourage himself. We need to encourage ourselves to run the race. Amen. I don't know about you, but I've come too far. I was saved in 2008, or not 2000, 1980. Uh, I've come too many years to turn my back on him and go the other way. I've learned too much of the things of the enemy trying to distract us and keep us out of the pocket, to keep us from using our gifting, to keeping us walking as a Christian should walk, encouraging people, being that witness that we need to be everywhere we go. How many times do we miss it? We go somewhere and God's got a divine appointment for you or I and we miss it because all is on our mind to get in and out of that store. Instead of praying that morning, God, lead me to someone today who may need an encouraging word. Have you ever had someone come up to you today and encourage you? Say, hey, I just wanted to bless you, man. I just wanted to bless you. I wanted to tell you how much God loves you and appreciates you. Does that not lift our spirit up? Sure. And say, God would send me a servant to encourage me? Who am I that God would do that? But he loves us enough to do that, church. 
He loves us enough to keep us from going off the other end and get distracted. Even he's invested something in us. That's his own spirit. Hallelujah. That we need to run the race and run it with everything that's in within us. Sometimes it does get discouraging. <clears throat> But that's when we need to get before him and say, God, I'm not going to look into circumstances. Amen. Sometimes I admit I'd come here and, and looked at the small crowd and say, God, what in the world are we doing? It's not changing. But you see, I can't change it. I wouldn't want to change it. God has to build the house. God has to give the increase. My part lays in, God, what would you have me do? What part am I to play in this? Am I to go around here witnessing? I'll do it. And that's what Lois and I have been praying. God, what do you want us to do? Just show us clearly that we can take the task at hand and do it. Because we know that we need to make a difference in this community if this is the community God has called us to, to be in. Mm -hmm. They need to know there's a Mark Jackson, a pastor out here, and a church out here that's looking to touch hearts and lives, that's looking to impact schools, people. They need to know that, that we're here. We're, use us. Now, I know some of you got jobs, and you can't be available, but guess what? I can be available. Here we were talking about uh, going to Matthew 25 ministries and maybe just helping out one or two days a week. But I, I don't feel that my spirit of saying, God, if you're going to build a church up here, we need to be doing something up here. <coughs> so show us. If we have to go around acting like a fool, let me be the chiefest of fools. I'll do it. Because I don't care. I don't care what people think of me. I really don't. I love the Lord. That's all that matters to me. Amen. And as long as he loves me and I stay on that race of following him, nothing else in the world could matter. Nothing. That's right. Nothing. Uh, a church wanted to take a look at me for uh, the pastorship. And I thought, well, okay, Lord, maybe I'll walk that direction and uh, see what you do. Then the more Lois and I talked about it, and it's not for me. That, that wasn't for me. I know I'm not supposed to go that direction. At least I feel. And God just show me if I'm wrong. And I say that humble because I never want to walk out of the will of God. Sure. I don't care what it is. Uh, sometimes I don't even feel worthy to, to speak his word. But yet I know God has placed that gift in me. But I love to preach. I love to share his word. I love to encourage people. I love to impact hearts and lives for the kingdom of God. And it's not me. It's the Christ in me Amen. that does it. Amen. And I have to let him continue to do that and flow out of me. I don't want to get him locked in a box here and to where I can't be used. So, where are we? Here. What do we look like? People. What hat are we putting on? Do we, do we come here and say, well, tonight's church night. Put on our big C for Christ. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Get our hallelujah praise on. And then we go out, go back to the house, and back to our little hell, and raise hell, and give hell, and, and be a part of hell. No, but the enemy comes in so sly, 
sneaks in that little crack. I mean, little crack. Rather, I don't know how many times I'd, I'd be going down the computer and hit my email, hit my email. And normally, I don't go through them and look at them. I just click them open all the way down the line and close them up. And all of a sudden, bang, pornography. <laughs> Everywhere. So it, I view that as nothing but a trap from the enemies of hell. Because it wants you to suck you in that. And once you get in that and open that door, guess what? There you go. There you go. You'll be so bound up in that, you won't even be able to, uh, you'll be afraid to even say the name of Jesus. That he'll destroy you. That, that's not my God. My God is a forgiving God. Drink of champions. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you tonight. Run the race with all that you have. Don't be discouraged. If you get discouraged and you can't encourage yourself out of it, call a brother or sister in the Lord and say, pray for me. Pray for me. I just, I feel down. I feel like I'm worthless. I feel like I just can't do this no more. And watch what God says to you. As he wraps his loving arms around you and say, come on, child. I didn't bring you this far just to let you go. You may have gotten off the course, but child, my hand is right upon you, nudging you right back on that course that I've ordained even from the foundations of the earth. I have a purpose for your life, and I will not let you go without serving that purpose. Yeah, we, we, he'll let us have our own will, but as soon as we get back and surrender, he'll keep us those purposes right before us. Do you know your purpose? Mm. Do we know Pastor Mark's purpose? Mm -hmm. Sure we do. He's to shepherd the flock, preach, teach the word. That's his purpose. Do we know Julie's purpose? Mm -hmm. Do we? Courage Mark, be his support, lift him up. Keep him lifted up before God. Isn't that all of our purposes? To keep our pastor lifted before the Lord? Amen. Amen. That way it encourages him. He may not see us or hear us praying, but at least it keeps him lifted up before God that God can move in his life. That's right. I want to see him come in this place spitting fire. That's what I want to see. Because you know what? When he spits fire... He'll spit it on us. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When he's lifted up and full of God and full of the word, guess what happens? What he did a few weeks ago. When he poured forth this good revelation of God's word. And we're all just sucking it up. Just pulling it out of him. That's why it's important to keep him lifted up. When we let him down guess what then he gets tired and man I don't know if I can do this anymore I don't know if I can go on I pour out I don't see any results I don't see anything happening but anyway that's his purpose and that's Julie's purpose what's yours what's your purpose that's part of your Christian attire. You see for Christ, your armor of God, helmet of salvation, come on. Part of your attire. Do we take it off and put it in the closet once we go home, get back in the world? I don't think we ever take it off. We'll always have it on. That's right. But I just want to encourage you and bless you. And just, like I said, that that letter did some work in me. 
to where I just had to go back and examine myself. It's always good to do, church, to examine self. I want to do it before God sends judgment on me. So it's better I do it than have him do it. A whole lot easier. And I choose to always have a heart that's teachable, pliable, and willing to repent when I get off the track. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anybody identify what I'm sharing tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, come on. Maybe I'm the only guy that does that. Might be. But. Praise the Lord. I'm encouraged. Amen. I'm encouraged. And uh, I feel like that um, God's given me some fire, fresh fire, back in me. So just continue, keep it on. Be sensitive. Pray. Ask God, what can we do in this community? What can we do as a group in this hotel? Because I know we're here for a purpose. Um, we can continue to pray. Ask God for the increase. Ask God for souls. Um, Absolutely. Maybe a few of us need to come early sometime and just walk up and down these halls and, and pray mm -hmm. and ask God, anoint this sign out here. I don't know if we have or not. I just did the Okay. And that God will draw people to us. He'll draw the hurting, the ones who are bound. The ones who will come up, come in here and say, I need Jesus. I am just so far away from Jesus. I, I need I need Jesus back in my life. And I say, any, anybody watching this by YouTube, if your life isn't together, if you feel like you have no peace, if you feel like you have no joy, that you failed, well, I've got good news for you tonight, that you can just give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just ask him to forgive you and cleanse you once again, and he'll put you back on that path and run that race that he desired for you to run. Because he loves you too much to give up on you. The enemy would have you say to give up. Forget it. You're not good enough. No, you'll never be good enough. But God says he loves you enough to make you good enough. So I'm asking you tonight, just right where you're at, just go down on your knees and ask forgiveness. Ask God to come and cleanse you once again. Put a new fire back into your heart. Let you know that purpose that he's got for your life. That you can begin to walk in those purposes. And walk in that calling that he has for you. You see, brother and sister, we all have a calling. We all have a purpose. And it's up to you to surrender to that. Be obedient and faithful to God. And if you've prayed that with me tonight, and in fact, I'm going to let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, anybody watching this video by YouTube, the internet, or wherever, Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the ones that are hurting and serious with you, that God, that you would set them free tonight, Lord God, that once again, that you would cleanse them by your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and they would see and know your love, God, and sense your hands upon them. And know, God, they are worthy because the blood of Jesus made them worthy. Hallelujah. And God, that once again you put in their hearts and, and show them that you want to use them once again. And God, they can be set free. They can get back in the house of God. And they can be used of you. And they'll have a new peace and a new joy that overcomes them. And in the name of Jesus, I declare it done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if you don't have a church, uh, you're more than welcome here at the Holiday Inn Express in Milford, right off of 275. We invite you to come. Come, enjoy our services and our worship. We'd love to have you. Uh, no matter who you are, we are not prejudiced. We love people. We love God's people. If you don't know God, you want to come find him here, we'll be more than happy to Leads you to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Glory to God. Stand your feet, church. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to ask you to take a benny and uh, just look within. And if you're not where you need to be, maybe you failed in some things this week, just right where you're at, just say, God, forgive me. Cleanse me. <coughs> Make me that man or woman of God. Again, put your arms around me. That I know that I know that I know that you haven't forsaken me. That you haven't left me. I failed you. The Lord God encourage my brothers and sisters here tonight. Bless them, encourage them, meet their needs abundantly above all they could comprehend or think of, Lord God. Yes. And let them know the depths of your love. There's no end to it, God. No end. Not only are you going to love them here, but you're going to love them in eternity. That's forever. Because church, he's coming. Coming soon. And I believe there's going to be some things that are coming upon the earth going to be difficult to, to go through if you do not know him. The only way through it is to have his peace and his purposes working in your heart and life. I bless my brothers and sisters in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.